Hello, everybody! Welcome to Real Geek News! My name is Kevin Andrew Rivera. I am one of the hosts, and our co-host here as well is Raul Ceballos. Raul, how you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 indeed! We got our special guest here today, Ted Evans, voice actor! How are you, Ted? Good, how are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Dude, we are pumped. We're going to be talking about Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Uh, spoiler alert for all you listeners, we will be discussing spoilers. So if, uh, if you don't want to hear spoilers, what are you doing? Why don't we just dive right into this stuff? As always, we always begin by talking about all the movie ratings. We got IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic. IMDb gives it a 6.6 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a critic score of 51%. Audience score of 87%. Metacritic score, uh, 47%. User score, 5.5 out of 10. Uh, Also, this was directed by David F. Sandberg, who directed Lights Out, Annabelle, Kung Fury. Haven't seen that last one, but dang, does it sound cool, because I do like Kung Fu. Um, Hmm. Gentlemen... What are some overall thoughts about this movie? I know there's a lot of drama behind this movie as well. Uh, there's box office stuff to talk about. Uh, Raul, why don't we start with you, my guy? What are your first initial thoughts after coming out of the theater, watching this movie, and just overall thoughts of the movie? Well, really quickly, David F. Sandberg, did he also do the first Shazam or no? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. he did yeah. do the first Shazam. Okay, definitely. Just- Wanted to get that in my head. They brought him back. Um, my general thoughts. Uh, I, I honestly, I'm going to talk about this as we go along. But I get the the same feeling I got watching Black Adam is the feeling I got watching this movie. It's like, all right, cool. It's it was fun. It was fun. It was okay. And I don't know. There's some things that we'll get into it, but that I'm still more, I'm constantly confused with every DC movie as to where the hell things are going and how this is, you know, we of course got our, the future, uh, you know, the road to the future lying ahead with James Gunn's, you know, new DCU. But in the meantime, these movies leading up until then, leading up until then, I'm just like, this is a mess. It's just crazy. So there are a lot of things that uh, I'm confused by, um and some just i don't know some weird things but it was fun <laughs> kind of like how i felt about ant-man man i'm getting tired of coming to these movies now and just being like ah I'm, it was fun yeah Dude, that's it, it. yeah oh. it, it's been just one after another with this stuff huh I, both I think... dc and marvel i'm getting <laughs> kind of tired of it now <laughs> yeah we're kind of dropping the ball lately i want I... something juicy i i just like we've talked about this before i will like my uh, frustration with DC is that I think they should just restart all of it, scrap everything, just begin from the beginning, and then just go. Uh, yeah. But instead, it looks like James Gunn is deciding to use some characters that were still in the the Snyderverse and bring it into his universe. Which, okay, if you've got a good <sighs> idea for it, great. But like, I, I'm kind of just. I don't know. It's confusing because now you look at Black Adam, Hardcore, the character Hardcore is in that movie. And now she shows up in that one. She shows up in this one. Uh, It's just, you know, am I am I as a general audience goer supposed to go, okay, but forget about the Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie. Yeah, that's not part of the forget about Superman. Forget about all this. Yeah. All that Remember stuff. How excited didn't you were, Kevin. You were you were amped. Dude, I was so amped. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, sorry. We have a sound effect for that. Oh, we we definitely do. We definitely do. But so, I think the the sad part about it is the fact that you know James Gunn is deciding to choose specific actors to return, but he was like, nah, forget Superman. Like, forget Henry Cavill as Superman. But we'll, maybe we'll bring back Jason Momoa as Aquaman, possibly. Maybe. You know, who knows? Shazam? He'll, he's coming back now, apparently. Ezra Let's... Miller? I sure. Why not? It's Ezra like... Miller? Yeah. Why not bring back the well, person who, who assaulted people in Hawaii? That That's that's perfect. Well, you know? and also, J- James Gunn being like, well, I got to bring my wife back. I can't. I'm going to be <laughs> in the doghouse. I'm going to yeah. be in the doghouse otherwise. Otherwise, it's going to be some awkward, you know, pillow talk. Yeah, Ted, how about you? How, what did you feel about all this stuff? Uh, you know, I went into this one with pretty low expectations, though I like Shazam, the first one, uh, because yeah. it was sort of just, you know, this is this is a kid's fantasy. It's, it's like a bunch of kids that are, you know, in the foster system, and they feel powerless, so thus they get powers, and like, isn't that fun? 
Um, <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's it's very light and fluffy. And I think because it's that, I, I, I walked away from this one not feeling indifferent, but I was like, I liked it better than Black Adam because it wasn't trying so yeah. hard to be all, like badass. It was very just, you know, it's light and fluffy and it is what it is and it's a self-contained story. Um, there's a lot of, I, I don't know if you guys watch Pitch Meeting. Uh, yes, I guy, love he, Pitch Meeting. He, he got this one very, very well, even to the point where I was, I was thinking like for me, it might be like a three out of five, but the more I think about it, I'm like, it's probably more like a two and a half. <laughs> mm. That yeah. said, I didn't I didn't hate this movie by any means. Um, mm. You know, I think I would put it like right in the middle of DC's lineup, maybe in, even more towards the top. But there was a few things that just it just felt like, you know, I, I think that's the problem with superhero movies is like Endgame. Somebody said this recently, like Endgame messed it up for everybody because <laughs> now every movie we expect to be like that, and it's it takes time. You know, that took ten years to get to. Yeah, and. You know, so this is definitely like an episode two of Shazam. And unfortunately, in today's marketplace, that like there's so much oversaturation with superhero movies that people don't care. And so yeah. I've already heard the director say, like, not going to do a third one of these because it's like such a, you know, $110 million to make this movie yeah. for it to be kind of a dud. You know, it's, it's a wash basically um, money wise for the studio because $30 million. Hundred ten million dollars. It's like, yeah, that was the uh, yeah that was the actual budget. One hundred ten. I believe that's what I heard. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that's yes. Crazy. And the, the fact that the first weekend was thirty million, and then the second weekend it dipped eighty percent. So it they, dipped a lot. That's yeah. not supposed to happen for these movies. Like Ouch. this is supposed to be making way more than that. I will say, like, because going going back to what you were saying, Ted, like. I enjoyed the movie as well. Like I, like as a movie alone, like if I wasn't thinking about the James James Gunn's not, you know universe, this movie was it was delightful. It was fun to watch, yeah. and I watched it from beginning to end with a smile on my face. However, it it is kind of frustrating when you have these types of movies that are connected to all these universe stuff because you can't help but you know add weight to it because of the fact that it that it is that way. You know. Mm. Um, so it, I don't know. There, there's a lot going on in my head when I'm watching this, and uh, the the only thing, the biggest thing I had to say about it was that I was kind of mad that Shazam's coming back to this new universe. Um, is he? I mean, I he technically I, is because he's hanging out with Hardcore and and the people from the yeah, Waller series, you know, the right. Peacemaker show, uh, right. and that's all James Gunn stuff. So, yeah. however. James I honestly Gunn, don't know what to expect. <laughs> James Gunn did say that it wasn't up to him to bring hardcore into the ending of the Shazam film. Uh, but, man, this is where all the drama starts up. We're not even talking about the movie yet, you guys. Right. The, <laughs> the drama behind the, the end credits uh, sequence for this movie is that apparently Dwayne The Rock Johnson, when he was working on Black Adam, he completely denied the people from Shazam to use his characters from the Justice Society of America in the end credits. He did not want them to use it at all. Jesus. And so instead, they used Harcourt and like the characters from Peacemaker that's to show why. up. When they we were talking why. about the Justice Society, that's what I was thinking. I was like, is this the same Justice Society from Black Adam? Yeah, because yeah. they're not mentioning any of those characters. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's frustrating because then Zachary Levi, who plays Shazam, uh, went on Instagram uh, live and actually started talking about that and saying it was not up to us. It was all Dwayne The Rock Johnson, which that's another layer of drama right there. The main guy from Shazam is now trying to pick a fight with Dwayne The Rock Johnson saying it wasn't our fault that the movie did the way it did. Mm. But mm. like whether or not that had been the case for the end credits, I don't think the movie got as much attention as it could have. Because the villain wasn't really like this big character that people know. You know, the marketing for this movie, I thought, wasn't very strong. So, of course, it didn't make as much money as it did. I went to go watch it because I wanted to go see Shazam too. But, you mm -hmm. know, I think most people might have seen Shazam 1 and were like, eh, yeah, it's cool. And they weren't hyped about the next one. And that's, you know, it's as simple mm -hmm. as that. General audience goers might not have been interested in watching this movie. And also there's the confusion of other people who are like, what's the point of watching this if I know right. this series isn't going to continue? 
I feel like for the rest of these for the rest of these movies, maybe except for the Flash, because I think I I do sense that there is a lot of hype about that movie. Yeah. Mm. Uh, with the word on the street of it being really, really good and Michael Keaton coming back and the trailers have looked freaking awesome. I But other than that, I don't get the sense that a lot of people are kind of excited. I think that everybody kind of feels the same way. It's like, well, what's the point? You know? Yeah. yeah. We're going to reboot this anyway. So, yeah, it's it's strange. Do you guys think that there's, there's a good chance that The Flash might not uh, project well either? It's going to see, I think right now it's, it's got to be a really good movie and it has to have that word of mouth. It has to be something like everybody start leaves the theater and goes, tells everyone you got to see this, which I was not doing after this movie. Yeah. I was like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Go watch it, something it, else at home. You know, it's also weird. Cause like there, there's some movies where I'll go watch it in theaters. And when I come out, I ask myself would I want to go watch this again? Like if I, if I'm at home even, and it shows up on my streaming service, would I want to click on it just for the fun of it? And the answer is no. Cause I, mm-hmm. I've seen it already. I, I, I get it, you know, and that's Those such are... a, oh, it's such a crummy feeling to have when you watch a movie like that. I mean the past, what, two or three, four superhero movies we've seen both on, on Marvel and DCs. I felt the same way. Like, eh, I've seen it. And yeah. I hate that I keep feeling that way. I used yeah. to like run back to the theater if I really liked one of those movies. Like I saw Guardians of the Galaxy when, the, when that first came out. I saw it like three times. Oh, yeah. nice. And I'm not doing that with a lot of these more recent superhero movies. No. I did. See, oh, I actually no. did see Ant Man twice, but it was mostly just because Bonnie hadn't seen it. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, for sure. Also, yeah, it is. That. I will Apathy. say that the uh, if if Guardians of the Galaxy three, I think that one comes out next month for us. Uh, as at the time of this recording, if that ga- that movie comes out and I'm just as disappointed, I'll be so upset. <laughs> uh, but you know, I I just we we want to get something good, so I think that is the next superhero film that's coming out. Um, but I guess it's not technically a superhero movie because Guardians of the Galaxy are more of just aliens, I guess. Right? Space opera comedy. Yeah, yeah it's a space opera comedy thing. With romance, why not? You know, yeah, I'm, it's like the trailer looks kind of interesting. I, but I, we had the Christmas special recently, which is like cutesy or whatever. Mm. But even the actors are tired of playing it, so there, there is that element of it too. Yeah. You're like, you're not even excited. You know, <laughs> Dave Batista is like finally had to stop doing this makeup. You know, yeah, he's done. <laughs> yeah. He's done. done. And it's just like, okay, well, clearly they're bringing it to rest, but it, it doesn't have that energy that excitement about like oh what's coming down the you know right i think the last superhero movie that i really liked and was like i gotta see that again was the batman to be honest mm. you know that's oh, kind yeah. of divisive because a lot of people did not like that movie i love that movie. i yeah i, I agree with you i thought it was great i think that i must the, i must have watched that like one. three times in theaters yeah was, that was incredible um but you know what actually i, I want to segue back to shazam because sure. uh the, the whole idea of the actors being tired of of their work uh, Zachary Levi is 42 years old, and I always talk to, hmm. I talk about this with Raul. He's got so many wrinkles on his face, yeah. and this this movie did not, not do him bad. any. Dude, he's got so many wrinkles. Uh, like he looks, he looks the, good. The camera, he it's like good. they the camera gets so close to his face, and it looks like someone <laughs> stretched his face out to try to get rid of the wrinkles. But yeah. I'm like, dude, it's it, are you I, gonna be Shazam for another 10 years? I, I Can will... you make that happen? I will say we did watch the first one, like we rewatched the first one, like the night before we went out to watch the second one. And you do notice a difference. Dude, I mean, he still looks pretty good, but watching the first one and the second one, like back to back, I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's yeah. been a it's been a few years. Yeah. You know, and uh-huh. since since we're dipping into more of the movie stuff now, I I do want to point out one thing before we start going through the plot summary here, and it's it's the fact that I I thought. Zachary Levi, my complaint about him in the first movie was that him and Billy Batson are not the same person. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the, you have this, uh. this like mature teenage kid called Billy Batson and the actor who plays him plays him very maturely, you know, suddenly mm. he switches into this adult and now he's just a man child baby. Yeah. That's like super dumb. And then he wasn't very dumb in the first one, but right. in this one, I felt like he was just, he just, turned the notches and was like, let me be super dumb for this movie. Yeah. Whereas then he transforms back to Billy Batson and I'm like, just keep this guy on screen. Like, honestly, he's so much more mature than, than Zachary Levi's version of yeah. this character. I never um, bought, I never bought that they were the same 
person, even in the first movie. And I love the first movie, but that was always a, a complaint I had is that they don't feel like the same character and the mm. same, same thing here. I, I don't know if that's the writing to blame or if it's the direction of Zachary Levi or if it's just Zachary Levi not really researching this kid at all and just like, I'll just act as young as possible. And like, that's the, that's the gag, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I feel it like seems totally like he's weird. trying to be a kid, you know, like what's a kid sound like? Whoa. Like it's very <laughs> hokey. Yeah. It, it, you know, what's interesting is the, when the first movie came out, there were a lot of interviews between, you know, the young Billy Batson actor and then Zachary Levi and, or they had separate interviews where they would ask them like, Hey, so what did you guys do to act the same way? Like, did you study Zachary Levi's performance and stuff like that? And the child actor was like, no, I never saw Zachary <laughs> Levi the entire time that we filmed this movie. That makes so much sense. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm like, come on, you guys. That's like, that should be rule or step number one. Yeah. Forrest, Forrest Gump, look at Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks literally met the child actor that played him as a, as a kid and mm. used the child's performance to you know personify his own version of the character so like that's that's something that should have been a no-brainer from zachary levi's point of view but you know the interview i feel like they maybe the producers learn from that after the first one because when you watch the second movie the the child actor he does kind of try to be a little bit more energetic but like it's i just don't think it's there because no. if if billy batson upped his you know energy uh, Zachary Levi upped his dumbness, which I was like, bro, what are you doing? That's just, ah. Now, Freddy, right on point. Yeah. Like Adam, Bro right Adam Brody plays. Yeah. So and good. really everybody else, honestly. I mean. And yeah. That's what I was going to say is like. Darla. Shazam, probably my least favorite part of the movie. Like, I enjoyed the, the family more, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was kind of sad that, that, you know, they eventually all the kids are going to start losing their powers now. And now we're just back to Shazam. So it's. Mm. I'm I'm interested in seeing where they want to go with that because maybe they were like ah forget the whole family thing let's just, let's go back to just one guy mm. but like also maybe that was the point of the the first and second movie it's, it's all about family you know like it's <laughs> I guess it's not anymore but uh, gentlemen why don't we jump right on into this why don't we start yeah. with the beginning of this plot point here um, we have. Two years after Th Thaddeus, I'm going to butcher so many names today. Two years after Thaddeus Sivana's defeat, Hespera and Calypso, two of the, the daughters of the Titan Atlas, break into the Acropolis Museum in Athens, Greece to steal the wizard's broken staff. The two then take it to the wizard, imprisoned in the god's realm, and force him to repair the staff and activate its powers. So this opening sequence, uh, so I, I really liked the fact that they just drove everybody in the museum crazy mm. and basically pulled a World War Z and started infecting people. That was um, cool, yeah. I, mm. I thought the, the whole whispering into people's ears uh, to, you know, enchant them was really, really cool. And, and I, didn't see, I didn't see it coming, and it was really fun. Um, but how about, how about you, Ted? What did you think of this opening sequence? I like this opening sequence for the most part. I thought the guy who was the the main uh exhibit guy i thought he was going a little too much for the the improv laughs you know it's like, <laughs> oh okay, yeah wasn't like, he the guy isn't he the guy from Shit's creek he must be yes he's I the think. guy who like does everything he's got like every job you know he's okay. the photographer and he's the <laughs> caterer and he's yeah 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 he's funny but clearly, yeah I, I agree yeah. yeah clearly it was like you know oh we're gonna this guy is gonna just riff and you know improvise and it's gonna be hilarious but i was like okay like we we get it but other than that i thought you know it was an interesting start for the two of them to come in with these trojan uh outfits and then take the masks off and it's you know uh lucy Liu and helen mirren um i gotta say the staff looks really goofy when they ho they hold it like this like they have like full grass like this thing is so big and so thick they have <laughs> yeah. to like hold it like this it just looks like a giant prop it just looks not real <laughs> i don't know it did look very cartoony i i, I totally yeah. think that too and i think uh i i i did like the sequence of like hello what you find sirs in armor like that's so wonderful and they're like yeah, yeah. no we're women look at yeah. us be tough and badass yeah. i was like all right if you're gonna play it that way you gotta you played it right because it, it did work for me and the, it was very badass plus when you see lucy Liu, you you know you think about uh uh Oh my God, I'm blanking out right now. Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Uh, cause she's, a, she's an angel. Of course you're going to look at her and be like, oh God, don't mess with her. But now she's a Spartan, sort of, right? And so she looks 
pretty tough. Um, but also the the idea of the wizard coming back was really interesting. Because um, you just you think he's dead in the first one, right? Because he turns to dust. But literally I guess, turns to dust. Yeah, quite literally. Oh, did and, they ever uh, explain? That. Did they explain in the movie later on why he's back? Because honestly, I I feel like I that's a blank. That's a gap in my memory. I don't remember. Yeah, they they definitely did. He once Billy sees him, he's like, "Well, I thought you died. What the heck? What's going on?" And he's like, "Well, no, I I, you know, disappeared from this realm, and then I went to the other one." Ah. Well, you didn't you didn't say that last time. Ah. You just you made it sound like you were just gonna die. <laughs> Somehow but, Palpatine returned. Yeah, Somehow. <laughs> that yeah, should be my next fine. sound on my. He's thing a here. lot. If if this were a pitch, if this were a pitch meeting, it would be like he. Why is he alive? So the movie can happen. If, okay yeah. then. <laughs> well, okay then. He might have. I don't know. Did he say that in the pitch meeting? I don't know. I, I feel like I'm, he I'm have. sure they would have. <laughs> yeah. But no, that that's so true though. Like they, it did feel very very forced. It was very plot type of driven like oh we need the character back so he can do some stuff for us so uh, yeah. I bring him back now how are we gonna fix the staff oh we gotta get the wizard back but uh yeah I think the opening sequence though was pretty cool all the all the yeah. civilians turning into stone in the museum um and then little, pushing... it, it is funny because like she then she does this dust thing it turns everybody to stone it's like why don't you just do that <laughs> could have just started that With way that, yeah. <laughs> no no i want to like whisper in everybody's ear and make it yeah like, yeah why are we wasting our time here like just go with the dust <laughs> was it was it lucy lou who turned them all to dust or was yes. it no helen mirren? i think it was helen mirren did that it was helen mirren because she yeah. she's the elemental one right Yes. I she had the that. power of elements, and then Lucy Liu had the power to whisper to people, I guess. that's so Basically, <laughs> Scarlet Witch. You remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> power power of like influence. Exactly. So, I, I mean, I guess it was a nice way to, for them to show us what their powers were, but it, it was nice to see that Helen Mirren's character, she's like, I'm done letting these people suffer. All right, let's just do yeah. this and move on. Sure. Um, I guess that does speak to their characters. Like, she's a right. little more sadistic and does stuff just for the sake of it, and she is... You know, she it serves a purpose what she's trying to do. She's not right. just there to torture people, which comes maybe in way later. they could have executed it maybe a little better, perhaps because you 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 can question that when it happens, you know. Um, but moving on to our next scene here, we got a uh, in Philadelphia, Billy Batson and his Shazamily of foster siblings save people on the collapsing Benjamin Franklin Bridge, but are called out for its destruction. The group is drifting apart at home due to them growing up and having personal interests. Billy is worried about being kicked out of the Vasquez family after he ages out of the foster system. In a dream, Billy is warned by the wizard about the daughters, prompting the Shazamily to begin researching them. Um, yeah, I, I thought the, the, the I, okay, th this was the scene with the, uh, I need a hero! Oh, yeah. um, Fixing the bridge, yeah. This, the bridge. I, got, I gotta say, this movie had some of the lamest extras. <laughs> oh scenes that went on for way too long like they focused on him like we were gonna have some sort of, and then they would kill that character off really quickly yeah. or throw him out a window and it's just like why did you focus so hard on that yeah. well, we're glad he that person died it's yeah. the same thing with that dude from Shit's creek who, who gets killed by you know after he's turned to stone i was like i'm more excited that he died than <laughs> than anything because that guy was just getting annoying you know <laughs> there, there's no, a part with this girl it, it it comes later than this but she's like they focus on her and she's it's th at least three different shots of her going like <sighs> and then all of a sudden she sees a thing and goes whoa, 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 and then like she gets thrown <laughs> out a window <laughs> That's it. i was like why did we follow her for so long <laughs> Oh man, but it's it's great though because when it when they do get killed, you're like, oh thank God! All right, moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get them out of here. There's no Which point I, for that. I don't think that's what we're supposed to feel though. <laughs> oh, no. so it's not something's not demon? being executed correctly. If that's how yeah. we feel. <laughs> yeah. they're like they're trying to tell us a quote unquote story about these characters that we don't need to know about. No. Nah. Just... Or the woman, the woman in the car, like in the part you're just talking about. I need a hero. Uh, where she's listening to that in the car <laughs> just so I, he can get the line, <laughs> hey, this song. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds that this song would be playing? Uh, I mean, I will uh, admit, it, it did put a big grin on my face when, when that happened because then the music goes, lifted ah, a big smile from me. Yeah, no, I mean, what, mm. I feel like you can't not smile when you hear that song, but it is very, very cheesy. I will admit oh, that. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then we we spent a lot of time with her in the car too. And then mm-hmm. as soon as she's saved, don't need her anymore. Doesn't come back ever again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the, also we talk about a uh, uh, Freddy who's like turn you know using his superpowers on his own time now and trying to do his own thing. Um, I th- I weirdly enough I was more interested in Freddy being a hero than I was in Billy being a hero. Um, yeah. So anytime he would go out and do his own thing, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, keep going. Like this, good for you, man. But like, I guess they're they're trying to keep everybody together. The the you know the older sisters like trying to. I guess she wanted to go to college, but then she couldn't because she failed, or I don't know what happened. She became a super superhero, so she just decided not to. Mm. How does that affect her life later? Because now she's not a superhero, so that's mm. kind of a bummer. I thought it was huh? like money or something. She just couldn't afford it, or something happened, so she didn't get the. Her character is is really funny to me though because. Um she's the only one who is the exact same actress yes in, yeah now. i like, wasn't well, sure really hot so i'm just gonna <laughs> stay hot <laughs> when i watched it i wasn't 100 percent sure because at first it took me a while like halfway through the movie because at first i just assumed it was two different actresses who happened to look really similar and they just did a really good job with the casting but then i kept i, I started paying more attention i was like no, she's the only one that's the yeah. same actor throughout. And Does try- not need the glow up. Am I? Am, and I I'm trying to think now. back. Well, was it like? Because I'm trying to think back to the end of the first movie now, when they all, you know, all the kids get powers. And I'm trying. Did they do that then too, or yeah. did they use a different actress? I, I they used a different I, actor. I, I, yeah. No. Did they? Yeah. No. In the first movie, she had a she had she had her transformation actor or actress. I feel um, like I remember. I'd have to go back and look again. Yeah, yeah. me too. It's because like well, it is the same. When this movie came out, that's when they started putting out a bunch of uh, uh, news announcements that they're like, "Oh yeah, and by the way, they kept the girl as the adult version too now." So she's, she's oh, not, I didn't know because that. why not? My, I, yeah, my, why? Yeah. My assumption is like thinking of it as like a business perspective. Maybe she had a, a couple of projects lined up that people thought she was going to be a star or something. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe this was a way for her to keep getting that FaceTime, you know. Sure. But I, I don't know if that worked out because yeah, I don't look at how the movie did in theaters, you know. And also, I haven't seen any of her projects. So maybe that's another thing. So I'm mm-hmm. just, you know, thinking off the top of my head, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's uh, I think the sequence was pretty good. Uh you know, once they start learning about the sisters and, you know, the daughters, uh, I thought that was interesting as well. But, yeah, uh, that scene where he's dreaming, where you think, where you think they're going to give you like a full on reveal of Wonder Woman. Right. Yes. He's yes, in the yes, restaurant yes. and you see like you see Wonder Woman from behind. You see her, you know, and you think they're finally going to cut over to a shot of Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. And then it's nope. and then it's Jaimon <laughs> Hansu as the wizard. Yeah, it was, yeah. Very off-putting and yeah. very strange to watch. Yeah. Superimposing his face onto Gal Gadot. It was it was very I will admit, I, I kind of shuddered a little bit when I saw it. I was like, oh, did not expect that. Yeah. It was very <laughs> weird looking. But do do you do you think that he actually I, I mean, uh no, I think I know the answer to this question. I was gonna ask, do you guys think that they're actually gonna get together Shazam and Wonder Woman? But I, I mean, we know the answer to that question. That, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Probably not. And most likely... She gave him a polite put down. She was like, mm, yeah. I forget what she says. but yeah. yeah, I think we're good. But also, you know what? That actually brings me to another thing is uh, the fact that we see Gal Gadot in this, eventually in this movie, hmm. uh, and Shazam knows this character. So now if this Shazam continues to the James Gunn verse... Does that mean Gal Gadot is back? I don't know. Man. Questions. Just, don't know. Th- that's literally what was running through my head when this scene yeah, came up in the dream. Because I was like, "That's one oh, of my problems. All this shit is giving me a headache, man." Yeah. yeah. Well, moving on to our next scene, then we got Freddie Freeman, still bullied at school, falls for a new girl named Anne, uh, the chick called Rachel Zegler, who played uh, Maria in West Side Story. I did not to whom... recognize her, but yeah. I, was, I liked her, and then I was like, I didn't realize till after the movie that that was her. Oh yeah, I the only reason I recognize yeah. her is is because the trailer just is always her putting her hands forward and just a close up at her face, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I gotta look up who this girl is. Oh my god, that's the West Side Story girl. Yeah. Um, but so this car- this new girl in school, whom she sh- he shows off his superhero self. Uh, Hesper and Calypso arrive with the staff and steal Freddy's powers. Anne is revealed to be their youngest sister, Anthea. <laughs> Very clever name. 
Billy the Shazamly attempt to save Freddy, but the daughters kidnap him and place an indestructible dome around the city, trapping everyone inside. I thought Freddy fell off the building when he first tried to transform into a superhero to, you know, save the girl, you know, to go meet Anne. Um, No, yeah. Like this, this whole sequence where like he he's just in his crutches walking away in in a building, you know, yeah. and it's oh, like oh let me let me go get what is it Cap- Captain Every Power? Let me go yeah. get Captain Every Power. Yeah, yeah. Like how are you gonna how are you gonna just scroll off to the side? You're not using a door or anything. And <laughs> and could have easily walked around that corner and been like, Yo, Freddie, c- come back over here. Like, where, where are you like, going? <laughs> There's nothing leading away. that way. Exactly. Yeah. But but again, this brings me back to the thing I was saying earlier. I thought Freddy's superhero powers were more interesting than Billy's. So I I don't know. It was interesting. He had so much more to go off of in this movie with Anne, um, who I can't, I, again, it threw me off that they were all sisters because I'm like, how does that work with the ages and the faces? Yeah, and, yeah. One they're age. all thousands of years old anyway, so. Yeah, but how many thousands? Because, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one yeah, looks like she's 16. And that's the other true. Looks like she's <laughs> Like, yeah. We were all born at the same time. Impossible. <laughs> How does that work? No out? way. <laughs> I cannot but, just say I, I'm, Freddy is my favorite character. Like yeah. I, I love Freddy so much, both in his normal kid form and in his superhero form. Freddy is like one of my favorite characters. I also like that he's just he's constantly bullied, and this is both in the first and second one. But he just owns it, you know. He's just like whatever, you know. He lets it roll off his back. He uses humor to kind of, uh, to kind of get by. And I don't know. I guess I can relate to that a little mm-hmm. bit. So I just kind of like, as a character, I'm like, you go, man. He gets I, a, I yeah. the romance side plot. Yeah, you know? he it's gets it all. You know, good for him. like good for him. Good for Freddie. He was kind of more of the, the the like protagonist of this. Yeah. segment of the movie anyways i loved yeah. it i'm like yes give me more freddy i love that yeah. he had this little side story with jaimon hansu and they just kind of had you know these you know like a buddy cop thing and trying to get out and escape this place i i love that more freddy please give me more freddy i want to see I a freddy agree. movie that would be incredible. I yes. would watch the heck out of that. And you know what? The, the I don't know what the name of the actor is who plays Freddy, but I just want to see him in more projects, period, because he's great. I, he's so charismatic whenever I see him on screen. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised. I, I don't know. Is is he like a Disney actor or something like he that? Was in, uh, he was the kid cast on, of It, Chapter 1. Oh, oh, really? Wait a minute. Wait, which character in It? Eddie. Is that the, little, the, is that the little brother, the one that died he, in the beginning? He's the one that's, like, really neurotic, and he has a mom that's overbearing. And he's always like, oh, my God, we're not going to go in there. And he's, oh, my God, you're so right. The one who yes. breaks his elbow or his arm or something, right? That's oh, right. Wow. Oh, my God, I didn't even think of that. Uh-huh. That's yeah. incredible. And he was, he was one of my favorites in, in that movie, too. That yeah. kid is a good – he's so funny, and he's got great natural comedic timing. Oh my God, man! That's my right. mind's being blown right now. Yeah. Um, okay, well then, uh, what's his name? Did you did you did you find his name, Raul? Uh, hold on, I'm looking it up right now. I want to see more of him. I just I any hey, movie he ends up being a part Jack of. Jack Dylan I, Grazer. Jack Dylan Grazer. Jack Dylan Grazer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. really good. Yeah, totally. He's one, to, he's one to look out for. I think. I think he'll do it far. Yeah. If he doesn't show up goods. in like an MCU <laughs> thing or a Star Wars thing, like I'd be surprised because that kid, he's he's got some magic twinkle in his eye. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. Well, but, I was uh, going to say before we move on, uh, yeah. you said you thought Freddie had walked off the roof. You know who did? His teacher. Oh, my God. That's Deidre right. Bader. That's right. Deidre. Unceremoniously, <laughs> just oh, yeah. suicide <laughs> right in the middle of this fluffy movie, and we've totally forgot yeah. about it. Yeah. I thought he was going to play a bigger role, but it's like what you're saying, Ted. We get so invested in these characters that just, no, we're just going to off them, especially when you bring in somebody like Diedrich Bader. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're but, expecting but also, a little more. Can He's we the also just Batman, by the way? In, in a lot oh of my God, that's right. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Can we also just mention though that that teacher, when he saw those those school students bullying him, mm. if I was a teacher, I'd be like, "You guys are suspended. You're you're literally beating up a crippled kid. Like that's not okay yeah. whatsoever." But instead, he's like, "Hey, what are you kids doing around here? Nothing, sir. That's what I thought." And then he just looks yeah, at Freddie yeah. and winks like. Don't yeah. worry, buddy. <laughs> like, dude, that is, that does not fly in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> That's so not okay. Like, you you would 100% be expelled at least, maybe suspended. I don't know. They were cartoonishly, like, bully. Like, 
I think kids exist. Do kids exist like this? I don't know. They just seem... yeah. They're very stereotypical. They're like '90s yeah. bullies. Yeah, you know '90s what? bullies. Yeah. You know what I thought would have been a really good com- like callback is if uh, Freddy used his powers to destroy their new car, because you know in the, in the first movie they uh, yeah. they get their car uh, thrown around and they just bring That's that right. joke back. Yeah, or you know make it more make, make it work make it more cool i suppose uh yeah. you can't don't make it too cheesy about it but uh that would have been funny they they just got their new car and they're squeaky cleaning it you know and right as they're done cleaning it boom like a rock just falls over it or something and it's because of freddy he threw a rock from far away or something <laughs> i think that, that would have been pretty cool it would have been yeah. classy but uh moving on to our next scene here we have what do we got here Freddy is imprisoned along with the wizard in the god's realm. The daughters reveal that they want revenge because the wizard killed their father. Meanwhile, the Shazamly enter the Rock of Eternity, not to be confused with The Rock, not Dwayne The Rock Johnson, where they <laughs> encounter a sentient pen called Steve, which they use to draft a letter to Hespera as a negotiation for Freddy's release. I mean, I thought the when Hespera, or, you know, Helen Mirren was reading the letter by, from the Shazamly, I thought that was pretty well done. Like, I thought the humor on that, it cracked me up. It yeah. got me giggling. Just hearing Helen Mirren herself reading this silly letter, um, I don't know how the heck they did it on stage or on, on camera without laughing because, you know, I thought it worked really well. Real, how about you? How would you feel about all this? I thought that was a funny scene. Yeah, with all the, you know, all the, it showed, what was it? Like, she was reading even the stuff like, oh, no, scratch that or whatever. The things that he was saying, you yeah, know, like while everything writing. everybody was saying in the room was right, good. right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, no, Helen Mirren, she's a, she's a pro. She's a pro. She, I'm right. sure she did that in one take. No, oh, no, yeah. no. totally one yeah, take. But, obviously, uh, yeah. No, that was that was a good that was a good sequence. I like that they keep bringing Steve back, uh, which mm-hmm. is really funny. <laughs> yeah. And the whole thing isn't this the sequence where they where they introduce the the flaming violin that never. <laughs> that never pays off at all. No, Not it does. Really. It does pay off. They, they, uh, I think that's what well, they, they brought used it. They as brought a it portal. back, but we still don't know what the hell it does. Yeah, or what it is. Yeah, that's true. They pay it off, quote unquote. It, it comes back. It like it technically becomes their portal to enter the gods realm. I think. I think that's what they used it oh, for. Oh, is that is that what they did? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. But if they if they did do it that way, then they didn't tell it well enough. Like they didn't show us that idea well enough. I mean, ultimately. Um, it was it was played for laughs. So it, yeah. after after the second time when it appears, it's just like we still don't know what the hell it does. It's like okay, I guess we're never gonna know. But it's, <laughs> it's just for it's just for comedy, and it worked on me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the violin, and then what's his name? Uh, Eugene is like mapping out, right? He's mapping out the cave and all that stuff. I thought there was, that was kind of a missed opportunity because I found that to be kind of interesting. I was me thinking, too. right. Yeah, I wanted to see him go on some adventure in one of these, you know, areas and then yeah, one of the other doors else. or maybe we, you know, have a chase scene through all these different realms or something. I was thinking oh, Monsters, man. Inc. Like have like a sequence Dude, yes. where they go through all the doors in Monsters, Inc. Yeah. That Monsters cool. Inc. slash like Doctor Strange because they they kind of had something very similar in Doctor yeah, Strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like they they didn't really go in too far. They were just like, yeah. let me throw this guy into a, a snowstorm and then close the door on him. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which I guess that is Monsters Inc. as well, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh what about the whole thing with the wizard killing the you know the the daughters of Atlas's father? Um, because I in a way, I after I heard their point of view, I was like. It makes sense. Like everything makes sense as to why they want to do what they want to do. Um, maybe Lucy Liu's character is a little oh too aggressive about it, but uh, like I I understood the bad guy's point of view. Like of course, if you kill my dad and you steal all my dad's powers, I'm coming for you because that's not your power. You stole that, and you know you deserve to get hurt for that. You know because we gotta we gotta take it back. It does kind of. It does kind of open your eyes to the recklessness of uh, the wizard, and then all the the what what do they call it? the Brotherhood of Wizards or like mm. what their their guild or whatever? Because then you realize, oh, they stole these powers from the gods, the Titans, and then they decided to use this uh, to choose a champion, and the first champion they chose was Black Adam, and that didn't work out so well. So it's like clearly these guys don't know how to use the power and mm. don't know how to choose somebody, you know. Uh, for this power, and they constantly, and then what's uh, Th- Thaddeus? The, the, what's his? The guy from the first movie. Sit, yeah, Thaddeus. Lana, 
Right, right. And they messed that up and then he became he became a villain because of that. So mm. they're they they kind of makes you realize, oh yeah, these guys kind of suck. <laughs> you know, they don't really know <laughs> what they're doing. Um Granted yeah. that there is there was one wizard left, so maybe he wasn't the the most Solomon the Wise of them all, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he was probably the one that was like, I, I just need someone to survive and and continue my legacy. Yeah. But it's like, well, dude, it wasn't your legacy to begin with, you know. It was right. it was fa the Father Atlas, you know that guy. Yeah. Da it's Daddy Atlas, that's what I'm gonna call him. Stolen power. On. Yeah. He uh, Shazam says Solo Man, and that kid would definitely know Solomon. He's like a straight-A student, that kid. Yeah, mm. that, yes! Like, you, you wouldn't be that dumb. Come on. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's very it's interesting. It's very the way annoying. They, Not the, way the same they chose. character. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think it was also really interesting to see the, the, the Shazamly figuring out all this information about the daughters and, and mm -hmm. reacting as teenagers would. Um, maybe not so much Zachary Levi, because I don't know how I feel about him. But, I don't know what that you know, most of most of the characters on that in that sequence were were reacting, I think, the way they should have. Um, but you know that brings us to our next scene here. We got Billy meets Hespera, and while the meeting is initially cordial, uh, she and Calypso soon fight the Shazamly. Pedro loses his powers during the fight, while Hespera is captured and taken to the rock. Oh, I forgot to mention the Pedro. When we first see Pedro in the movie. He, they started to make it so much more clear, like, he's LGBTQ, and like, hey, you know, you did it in such good taste, uh, and I, I think you made the character so much more three-dimensional as well, mm -hmm. and that's what we need more of if we're going to include more LGBTQ characters. Yeah. Um, and it was just kind of, it was sad that he gets to lose his powers, because I was like, come on, man, he's like one of the first to go. Yeah. Let's, ah. Oh. Well, uh, his, his moment of, uh, like, kind of, they're like, tell us your secret, and they're all like, we're superheroes, and he says, I'm gay. <laughs> Like, yeah. Oh yeah. That coming I, out moment was like, just. We know. I, I love that. Yeah, I love, I love that because yeah. everyone's oh, like, great. "Yeah, we know, bud." It was like, "Yeah, you do." It was good. Yeah. Of course, that was a great moment. Fun. Very like funny. That. Very cute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But now the, the this is also the sequence though. Billy meeting Hespero, where he's like, "It's all about family." Can yeah. I be honest? I have seen the trailer for this movie so many times that yeah. when I saw this sequence, I was like, can we move on? Like, yeah. the joke, <laughs> the joke's done. Like, I'm so over this joke already. We yeah. get it. Helen Mirren was in Fast and Furious as well. We get it. Okay. We oh, got it. that's... Oh, shit, get out of here, right. bro. <laughs> that's right. I didn't... Well, I didn't think that was a purposeful... I just thought, yeah. Oh, well, that, oh yeah. They didn't yeah, do that on purpose, though. Little, right? little. I'm pretty sure they did it on purpose. Cause, really? Just because Helen Mirren was it? They, yeah, that's. Well, I didn't from, even realize that until just. From now. what I've heard is like they, a lot of the writers were trying to make Shazam turn into more of a Deadpool type, where he could make those pop culture mm. references and like. But he, he, the difference between him and Deadpool is like Shazam can't look at the camera and go right, you know, from yeah. Fast and Furious, Helen Mirren. But like you know, Deadpool. If can. you're gonna commit to that, you gotta commit all the way. Yeah, and, and that, this is not that type I, of movie, right? And so it's you can't be fourth wall breaking and kind of break it. You know, you have to fully break it if you're gonna do it. Um, but like, I got the joke, and I think the trailer just kind of punched it into my face, and so I was like, all right, I, let's move on already. But the the other thing I wanted to bring up was the fight sequence between uh, these characters when Calypso Lucy Liu gets like chucked into a building or like a potty stall or whatever <laughs> um they continue to fight hespera underground and that sequence happens for like five to six minutes or something like that mm. and then when they come back up then lucy lou finally wakes up from her nap and i'm like nah. there, there's no way that would have taken i don't know i'm, I'm being very <laughs> picky about the small details but i agree but it was a fun sequence i had it was a lot of a fun, fun with sequence. that fight yeah. it's, it was very brutal and you know they're both like showcasing the peak of their abilities and their strength and all that stuff and i thought it was a fun fight and it wasn't until after lucy lou comes back that that i was like oh yeah that's right <laughs> like mm. i totally yeah. forgotten yeah about yeah. it mm -hmm. because i was so enthralled with the fight it was pretty cool when when they take Helen Mirren and just lifted her up and slammed her to the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it kind of cool. flips on them, and then now Shazam gets flipped around, and because like you see the the level of of seriousness, like the the power that Hespera has uh, during this battle, and uh, you know you can't help but feel like you know you, you just want her on your team because you know you, clearly she's gonna get what she wants. Um, Helen Mirren. She and she looks so badass in this fight. Like she Helen does. Mirren, it, I, I I love Helen Mirren in general anyway. 
But to see her do something like this, like go toe to toe, like in a superhero movie with somebody like Shazam, she looks so, I mean, she outstaged Shazam as far as badassness. Yeah. Only Helen Mirren can do that, I feel like. Yeah, totally. One of the few. No, it was great. Any last thoughts on this one? Let's see. Yeah. No? Okay, cool. moving on then to our next scene. <laughs> I was saying, how old is Helen Mirren? <laughs> oh, yeah, look that up. She's uh, old enough, baby. Mwah. Wink, wink. 77. Wow. You would, never, you would never know. No. Whose blood is she drinking? Because you, you would never know that. She's a unicorn, man. She <laughs> must have eaten a unicorn. Well, there are unicorns in this movie. There that are unicorns in There's this a connection movie. right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, moving on to our next scene here. We got Hespera easily breaks out and steals the golden apple, the seed of the tree of life. Meanwhile, Freddy and the wizard attempt to escape the god's realm with a sympathetic Anthea's help. Just as Hespera returns with the, the apple, the daughters argue as Hespera and Anthea want to use the apple to revive their realm. While Calypso wishes to plant it on Earth to destroy it, Freddy steals the apple but is discovered. Uh, though Billy and Shazamly and the Shazamly show up and Freddy requires his powers reacquires his powers okay wait a minute this brings me to a really good point so freddy reacquires his powers once he grabs the, that staff because shazam runs super fast he could have done that every single time throughout this movie and he didn't do that well not just that well, he, he touched used, the staff he, but he, he didn't he t he used his crutch which I'm like, is does it work like? Yeah, because right. Shazam was like, Shazam was like, crutch, Freddy, crutch, and then oh, he yeah. extends his crutch, and his crutch touches the the staff, and then uh, he gets his powers back. But I don't, I'm like, is that really how it works? Like, I that's, guess that's, it looks like it. I mean, a movie like this, yes. Yeah, why not? Sure. Well, because it was, I can't remember because I saw this movie a week ago. I can't remember if if Shazam was holding the staff while Freddy was touching it with his crutch. Because that's the way that he gave the power out in the first movie. He has to be holding it and saying, say my name so you can gain my powers. Uh, yeah. Shazam! Uh, that's right. I don't, so, mm, I don't know. yeah. I'm it's not been sure a couple of weeks works. since I've seen this. Yeah. Um, but also, I want to talk about the golden apple. Because the golden apple, I feel like, wasn't something that we really cared about in this movie or knew or really understood we saw it as a black apple for like a small quick second i think mm -hmm. when we first meet steve the pen um but other than that it's like you don't think that that's a really important thing that they're showing us because it, it didn't have any relevance in the scene um but i, I don't know I, what did you guys think about the whole golden apple idea there's a lot of mcguffins in this movie <laughs> yeah yeah the well, yes. after mcguffin after mcguffin the staff yeah. The apple, like we had to get the thing so we can get the power, and then we're gonna steal the power, and then we fight, and then the movie's <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Skittles. That's another. Skittles. Thing. Oh yeah, don't forget the product placement. Yeah, Jeez. don't forget the very blatant oh my God. product placement. Uh, taste the rainbow. Yeah, I guess uh. the apple thing. Yeah, it's there in the beginning in the uh, in the cave as a like a black. I guess it's just there to establish it's there. So that they can easily, when they want to reference back to it, they can be like, hey, you've seen it here. We're bringing it back. Oh, it's a gold apple. I think it was just, I don't know. They didn't make too big of a deal about it in the beginning. They just wanted to establish it's there. And You know, it, it, it's so weird. I, a part of me wishes that I could have watched the, you know, the, the wizards, like the entire order of the wizards fighting Daddy Atlas and taking an apple, you know, in the mm, beginning of the movie. That think, would have been cool. That would have been a really cool intro and then cut to the future with with you know helen mirren's character and lucy Liu in the museum um i think that would have made things more interesting and it would have made more sense once helen mm. mirren's like aha i finally found the apple that no one talked about in this movie yeah finally yeah. yeah and then that way when they do introduce it when they when they're in the cave you see it and you're like ah oh, i know what that is yeah. i know what that is like you, you know that there's more anticipation about it, you know. Right, Whereas right, now yeah. it's just like, why she grab an apple? Oh, yeah. it turned yellow. Yeah. Uh, who knew that was gonna happen? Oh, <laughs> we're gonna yeah. know that. The heck. Um, also, what, the other thing I wanted to bring up was Anthea's powers. I don't think we talked about that yet. I liked her uh, powers a lot. I thought they, they were, were cool. They looked cool. They made no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to ask, do you know what they do? <laughs> kind of she... rotate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, they rotate the heck out of things, bro. It was, it was very Doctor Strange-ish 
uh, yeah. just kind of like all the, you know, in, in No Way Home with just all the buildings kind of moving around and stuff. But having said that, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's derivative, maybe not. Having said that, it's still a really cool effect. It, yeah. It didn't wear off on me um, at all. I thought it was really, and, and they used it in really cool ways, especially that shot. And I know it's in the trailer, but now we see it in the context of the movie where Shazam is like flying towards the camera and you see all the buildings shifting around him and he's like, you know, he's like dodging it and stuff like, I mean, it's a really cool looking shot. So oh, yeah, yeah, that's a really, uh, the power set visually is very pleasing. Mm-hmm. Also, it's it's interesting to see how how the powers her powers worked when Freddy and and the the wizard get stuck in front of a giant dragon. We get an introduction to this huge black dragon with blue fire that looked really badass. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of a sudden, Anthea's like, "Oh, it's a pit of despair. It's okay. I can save you from the pit of despair." Mm. What is the pit of despair? <laughs> I thought there's <laughs> there's no way to escape that kind of thing. I guess there is if you're Anthea. But, uh, you know, again, it's it's the whole, what do these powers even do? Oh, they help the plot move forward. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Gotcha, yeah. I gotcha. It is cool, though. It is very, and, very cool. And then what was it later on? Was it the dragon shooting something? Something was shooting at Anthea, oh, and then was, she just quickly, what was it? It was the other witch. It was uh, Helen Mirren. Yes. she or, was. Th- or it was Lucy Liu. One of them was trying to, they, they turned on each other. Because she was trying to like get them to stop from taking over and hurting, right? Uh, her beloved child that she was in love with, <laughs> right? And she threw she threw something at her, and then Anthea like quickly like did her little geographical shift all way, way 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 back, still and then got. she yes, and it still it still came towards her. To which I'm like, okay, maybe sure do that, but like move laterally or something like <laughs> yeah. you you know it's still after you like yeah. But it's a yeah, it's a cool power. I can't believe you, I didn't even think about the fact that Anthea is so much older than Freddy. Like I, <laughs> oh yeah, that was then the pitch meeting. They called that out. He's like, oh yeah, she falls in love with this child, like <laughs> six thousand years old. That's kind of pedophilia, yeah. right? I mean, <laughs> not like, really appropriate. So lesson of this movie is it's okay to date people that look your age. Uh, yeah, that's there. That's the say, plot. Uh, she looks like a teenager. So, <laughs> she looks like a teenager, so it's okay. So it's sure. totally okay. Anything in this it's movie, weird. I think. I think the answer is always. Eh, I don't think too hard about it. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> so the plot can keep going. Okay, yes. don't yeah. think about it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I want to reiterate though. I really do like this movie. Like I enjoyed it. I, yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't watch it three or four more times, but I did enjoy the movie. Right. But I feel like I'm like, I'm so pessimistic today on this movie review, but I don't know, it's just coming out of me because it's stuff that really sticks out. When you start going through it and looking at each thing, you're like, that didn't make sense. Ah, It wasn't (laughs) done very well. Yeah. By the end of this this review, I'm going to be like, you know, guys, I actually hated this movie. (laughs) What's going on? God. Completely (laughs) come around on it. I was a three, and now I'm a two and a half because I thought about it. <laughs> Actually, it was pretty dumb. And that's not what they want you to do. They I'm don't still want at a you three. to think about it. I'm the closest thing we have to this god uh, thing is Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, did, I did want Skittles after the movie was over. I will admit that. I was eating Skittles at the time, so it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it all works out. It all tastes yeah. the rainbow. Um, <laughs> well, moving on to our next scene here, everyone. We got Billy and the Shazamly enter with the wizard in the Vasquez home, where they reveal their secret identities to their foster parents. Calypso appears with a dragon named Ladin to acquire the apple. All but Billy lose their powers in the skirmish, while Calypso retrieves the apple and uses it to plant the tree at Citizens Bank Park, which spawns monsters to attack the city. So again, this was this was the moment where Pedro was like, I'm gay. And they're like, yeah, right, dude, we know, yeah. buddy, we love you. That which was, I thought yeah. was a sweet, very sweet uh, scene. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have to bring up a point. Uh, the mother of the, the foster family, you know, they're like, we don't have money. We don't know if we're going to be able to keep the house. I'm like, you've gotten a lot of Botox. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, hold on it. Wait, wait. Was it the same actress? Really yes, hot it, mom. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was looking good, but she definitely had some work done. I was like, <laughs> okay, maybe that, if we cut out that, you know, then we'd have some money for the kids. You can afford Dude. the Botox, but not... <laughs> Not the house. Oh no, yeah. that's awful. <laughs> I could have sworn they had recast her, and so I, I was. I mean, she looks. The, the, yeah, the, it, she looks it's great. Well, well worth it. Yeah, yeah, she looks great. But you know, I was like, mm. 
<laughs> yeah, that, man, that that's okay. That's good to know then, because I, I I had no I could have sworn I was like, oh well, they probably recast because that's what they did with the adult version of the older sister. You know, oh, I, I can't remember. You guys saw uh, you know the first Shazam more recently yeah. than I did. I, I yeah, can't it's remember. it's the same it actress. Okay. She's, it is, man, she's just, I don't know has a different haircut and stuff. Yeah, yeah, she looks great. Not, not that I'm not I'm, I'm trying not trying to shame anybody who does Botox. You know, they just do what you got to do. You know, live your life. She but... looks great. It looks. Oh good. yeah, she looks. Yeah, fantastic. She, looks, she looks very Absolutely. pretty. Like, just thought you were a different person. That's all. all right. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I th- I think the whole introduction though to to the fa- the parents just being like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Was I thought it was handled really well, and the pacing was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, the dragon just destroying the house after they've made a, a final payment to the house was kind of <laughs> hilarious. Um, this was the moment where once all the kids started losing all their powers left and right, I was like, okay, Shazam, just steal the staff again with your super speed and then just go, you know, give them their powers back. What's the problem? And I think just after that sequence happened with Freddy, it just never happened again. So I was like, ah, all right, maybe that's just, so the plot will go forward. I get it. Off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally fine. But, I will uh, say I, I'm glad that they finally like the parents uh, are kind of are finally in on the secrets of everybody because I was like if they go another movie without these parents knowing the true identity it, it would just be beyond reasonable belief at this yeah. point. I'm like they mm. so I was I was good for like okay yeah they know like they would have to like there's no way this movie this series could continue going with without the parents knowing. Yeah, and it was kind of cool too because then you know then they got to help him out and the whole thing with the I can't remember what he called the van the something mobile I can't remember oh, but yeah, yeah. With, with the van and you know they were great too they were kicking butt you know at the end of the movie too so yeah, yeah. well then moving on to our next sequence here we have uh, Hespera and Anthea object to their sister's destructive plan but Calypso mortally wounds Hespera and depowers Anthea Billy, in despair, asks the wizard to take back his powers, though the wizard assures him he is a true hero. Heeding the wizard's words, Billy transforms and flies off to stop Calypso, while the Shazamly enlists the help of unicorns to fend off <laughs> the other monsters. There's a couple of things I wanted, I wanted to dissect here. Um, <laughs> well, first, first of all was the fact that uh, why... If, if we knew that the staff could get rid of Anthea's powers, why didn't Shazam use the staff to get rid of all the other people's powers, like Calypso's powers and Hespera's powers, so that he could stop everything from the beginning. Maybe because he didn't know, but I was gonna say, by a good idea. maybe by the because yeah, maybe he didn't know, and then by the time that happened, where Anthea lost her powers, I don't know. Did Shazam ever have another opportunity to be able to do that with Hespera and and Calypso? I'm sure. I'm. I mean, I'm sure if the plot required it, they would have figured it out. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. it felt like. It did feel like that kind of thing where it it didn't seem impossible if they could have just done that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but also, I mean, they had they had moments where Anthea, with her lost powers, was interacting with Freddy and the Shazamly when yeah. they're all hanging out together and regrouping. Um, there could have been a moment there where she could have brought that up, you know. Hey, use the staff to take away Calypso's powers. You don't have to try to trick her and keep on fighting her with her abilities. Um, if- Sorry, if no, go ahead. maybe I'm thinking about this way too hard. If <laughs> Anthea lost her powers, wouldn't she just age into dust? I was thinking about that too. Yes. Yeah. I, I if she's as too. old as she's supposed to be, she well, become bones. Like, right. Like, yeah, like not. at the end of the Last Crusade, like yeah. he, like she would just like age that made into no dust. Sense. Instead, she stays exactly the same age that she looks, which God, makes am I right? no sense. Like she doesn't have her powers anymore. It makes no sense. Mm. Now she's actually 16. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I it's guess. still okay. <laughs> so it takes away her powers and it de-ages her magically to look exactly how she always looked. That would have been hilarious. I, that would have been hilarious, though, if, if she w- walks up to Freddy and hugs him like, I'm a human now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm thinking no, way more about this than, than the movie wants me to think. Oh, yeah. The movie does not want you to think. <laughs> None of this. Yeah. <laughs> eat your food and rush your body. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let me bring up the other thing I wanted to dissect here, which was uh, the, I complained earlier about Billy Batson with, uh, you know, Zachary Levi's Shazam, and I kind of have a similar problem now with the youngest sister, the one that liked the Skittles so much, that threw the Skittles at the unicorns. Darla, um, right? Darla? Darla, that was her yeah. name. 
Darla, her adult version, still acts very babyish. Uh -huh. But, like, the actress who plays the young Darla, she's not that babyish anymore. And I, I kind of felt like that kind of stuck out to me as well. Um, yeah. Most of the other, you know, the other characters who played the adult versions, they were playing just mature teenage kids at that yeah. point. Mm -hmm. But, like, this girl, like, Darla clearly, like, the young Darla clearly has a more mature attitude now. Yeah. And then when she turned into an adult, it was just, like, this whole, like, eh, la, 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 kind of thing that went on. And I was like, that's that's kind of an issue, you know? That's another see, mm -hmm. that's another part where the actor should have at least connected with the other actor and figured that out together. That's got to be on the director, you know? I, I, I feel like he wouldn't just let that fly. They They probably wanted her to be, you know like that or for comedic effect or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I will um, say I'm, it, that may be true, but I honestly didn't notice that much, I guess because it's not as drastic because Darla is still a little girl. She's just not as young as she was in the first movie. Mm -hmm. So I guess for me, the difference wasn't as drastic as like Billy and Shazam. Mm. Also, can we just say the, the unicorns looked horrifying? Like they were, I did terrifying. like the dark unicorns. They cool. were they were pretty badass. They were really cool. Um, like yeah, when I say horrifying, I mean in a cool way. Like it was yeah. badass horrifying. I've never um, seen a unicorn portrayed that way. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, it, it's the last thing you would think about it, you know. And mm. once it tastes the rainbow and it finally joins, you you realize they're not so bad after all. Um, but it really gave me. I, I don't know if you guys have ever watched or read uh, this series called Berserk. Um, it's like this very dark and gory, like black knight kind of storyline with demons and stuff like that. And horses in that series look horrifying. Hmm. And when I saw this unicorn, I was like, dude, like that looks like they ripped it off the, that show or that series. Hmm. That's really, really awesome. I want to see more of that. That'd be so hmm. cool. Um, but yeah, the, the unicorns looked really cool, fighting off all the demon monsters. Uh, this was the sequence, by the way, where we saw that that extra, that lady who was walking around all dramatic for three three shots, and then she got killed. I was like, <laughs> oh, kill her! Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was our big line, was, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> thrown off into, a, like, a window in the back. <laughs> She as did, soon as she gets thrown out, I was like, yes! <laughs> she did play it pretty broadly, didn't she? She did, yeah, she yeah. did. Very yeah. much so. Like, it it, like it, she was now the lead of the movie. For yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I felt like she was supposed to have other scenes or something, and maybe they just cut it out. Maybe. And, but like, Probably. Uh, but yeah. now it just it just makes this sequence so much uh, more ridiculous. Like, there's no point. There's it very, very pointless. Cut out really bad. Yeah, it really mm. did. Like, all I needed to see was just more extras getting killed. You didn't need to focus on one guy, you know, I, one lady. I, I guess maybe, like, let's give, let's focus in on one extra and focus in them on them just long enough to maybe get you to sympathize with them when they do get killed. I don't know. I'm just yeah, I'm yeah, grasping true. at straws here. I don't know. No, that's, a, that's a good point. That's a good point. I, I mean, also, uh, I, I will say one last thing here is the unicorns stabbing all the demons was pretty <laughs> badass as well. Yeah. Um, it was very, it's very, uh, I guess maybe I want to say plot driven, but like, no, it wasn't plot driven. I know, I guess it was. What I'm, I don't know if I'm saying something positive or negative right now, but it looked cool. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it looked cool. It, it worked for me. Seeing all these these unicorns just coming in and stabbing other demons, it looked awesome. And also the demons just being like, oh my god, oh run, you <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know if this stood out to you guys, but at least for me, I felt that. Like, cause this, this end battle with all these creatures coming out could easily have been like a, you don't know what creatures they are and they're just kind of all over the place. And it's just like a mass of creatures and you don't really know what's going on. It's great. But I do feel like with this movie, they kind of focused in a little bit on each creature and yeah. they all look so different, you know, from one another. I don't know. It just, I felt like, okay, there's this one. Okay. And then this one's doing this. And then they keep cutting back to these same creatures. Mm -hmm. And it felt like you could actually, each one had like a different personality or whatever. It didn't feel like just some mass of different creatures that you couldn't really get a handle on. Like they yeah. kept, kept cutting, cutting back to like the Cyclops and then the, whatever that one creature was that looks like a deformed bird mixed with a human oh, i don't yeah. know it was... looks so cool yeah but they yeah we we followed them a little bit instead of just seeing like massive crowd shots of monsters chaos. I, thought that, yeah. I thought that was cool it was good like controlled chaos i thought that too and yeah. it, this, the, this part of the movie i really didn't have much problem with because 
you know, it's less of the plot and having to think about stuff and more just the superhero action stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and they did a pretty good job with it. It was, it was basically just the seven deadly sin monsters, but like a hundred times fold, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it was really cool. Like I, I appreciated it. Yeah. And also you only get humans and unicorns fighting them instead of Shazam people, uh, or Shazamly's. Shazamly member, Shazamly member. The, sh the Shazamly was riding the unicorns at one point. Which so technically, whatever. it was the Shazamly. It's the Philadelphia fiascos, guys. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> exactly. Well, moving on to our next scene. Then we got Billy persuades a dying Hespera to help him stop Calypso. Realizing the dome reacts violently to his lightning, Billy lures Calypso to the park, and uh, while Hespera shrinks the dome to contain them, Billy fights Calypso and Latin before killing them both by overloading the staff with electricity city, destroying the tree and Calypso's army with them at the cost of his own life. Hesper acknowledges Billy as a true god before succumbing to her wounds. Um, yeah, I, I guess the lightning uh, thing happened earlier once when Freddy first got kidnapped because they, they started that huge dome around all of the of Philly. Um, and that did kind of give you a first clue. I didn't realize he was going to use it to overcharge his own body. Right. Because that, that's kind of what he did. Right. Oh, or at least overcharge the staff, but that's what. But it was. he was sacrificing oh, himself because the staff is so overcharged it could kill him. Mm. Right? That's what I was. Yeah, thinking. that. Yeah, I think that's that's what it was. Kind of like Tony. So. Kind of like Tony. Tony Stark or Bruce Banner using the gauntlet. You know, they would have to understand that you're going to sacrifice yourself because it's so powerful it might even kill you. But yeah, yeah. that's it was like a similar thing. I actually really like the sequence though too. Uh, one of my favorite shots was uh, Zachary Levi's Shazam doing like this charged up punch, and he punches the dragon right in the face. Um, yeah, that yeah, was big so uppercut. Epic. Yeah, it was very like Thor, uh, Thor Ragnarok, like lightning filled in your eyes kind of power. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also just a quick callback uh, from previous scenes: the sequence where Zachary Levi grabs the car and throws it at the dragon and goes. I just threw a drag. I just threw a car at a dragon. I love my life. Yeah. Um, made me go. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but I thought that wasn't in the movie. I thought it, that was cut from the final. No, no, it was in the movie. I, I don't made, even remember it. You know, you're making me doubt myself right now. Maybe. No, no, maybe, I don't know. I no, I could be. I could be totally wrong. You know what it is? Because I had just seen it so much in the trailers so many times. Yeah. I don't know. I just assumed. Kind of went right over. I don't know. Yeah, you, I could be wrong. I don't know. No, I mean, it, there's a good chance that, that that's also true. Also, another thing to uh, throw out there was uh, in the fight between the dragon and, and Shazam and the others, before they go into that smaller dome, uh, Shazam did get to interact with some uh, civilians, and there was a civilian that sees Shazam fall to the ground, and he goes, Oh, I got you, are you going to save us? What's happening? It's, uh, oh, look, it's Captain Marvel. And the guy who says, Hey, look, it's Captain Marvel was he used to play Billy Batson back in like the 90s, I think, or the oh, 80s uh, interesting. on a TV show. So it's kind of cool that they kind of found a way to sneak that in there. I, I um, wonder I wonder how many people who aren't familiar with the with the, you know, the history of Shazam and all that stuff. How many people were like, is this is this crossing over with Marvel? Like, what's going on? Oh, yeah. What's Especially going on when you say Captain Marvel like that's is Brie Larson going to going to show up at some point. Yeah. <laughs> And like the, the whole movie when they're just trying to figure out like, wait, what's my superhero name? What's my superhero name? And somebody says Captain Marvel. I'm like, oh, no, they can't keep that name now. Like that would have been kind of cool if they started that drama with Marvel and they were like, yeah, uh, we right. get to use it first. Um, but, you know, I think the, the sequence with the dragon was pretty badass. Ted, how about you? What, what did you think about all that stuff? Yeah, I thought this end was real fun. You know, the the powers and him shooting lightning and it just sort of like pings around the the small dome thing and then explodes and that's it you know it's uh this like i said this is more of the fun and games part of the movie where it's just superhero shit mm. you know it wasn't a sky beam which was nice and uh you know they sort of like i never thought for a split second that he was like really dead Mm. I mean, it did when they put him in the grave, but then, of course, you know. That's that how, that was, well, we'll get to it. I'll, I'll, I'll save that for, for yeah. that later scene, yeah. But I like the dragon. I thought the dragon looked pretty good. Very, very cool, yeah. yeah. 
I screamed yes when Billy Batson died. <laughs> yes, oh, it's just it's horrible because there there was that part uh-huh. of me that was like, oh man, he really killed himself for it. Wow, that's I didn't I kind of didn't see that coming. But then also I was like, thank you, good, because I'm again my brain is thinking about the James verse right now, the gun verse. Okay, and I'm like, please yeah. just get rid of him then. Just don't bring Zachary Levi no. into this. Like just. Let him get get cut, and that's it. That this should be the final movie. He saved all of Philly. Can you be happy with that, people? Yeah. Come on, be happy with that. Well, well, well since you're gonna go ahead and say that, I'll I'll go ahead and say, yeah. I thought when I saw this, I was thinking, ah, that's how they're gonna. Okay, they're gonna end Shazam here, and that's how we're gonna lead into the rest of the stuff. Like, we're gonna start ending the stories for all these characters. Cool. And right. then there's yeah. a literal Deus Ex Machina at the end of the movie in the and we're like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess never mind." Yeah. So. Which brings us to our next sequence here. Uh Anthea brings Billy's grieving family to the the prince, Gal Gadot, the last living being with godly powers. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about Gal Gadot, not Diana Prince. Appears and repairs the staff, imbuing it with her power and using it to revive the god's realm and Thea's power and resurrect Billy. Billy, in turn, uses the staff to restore his siblings' powers. Uh, the Shazamly fixes their home while Anthea and the wizard take up residence on Earth. I, wait a minute, I'm gonna, I, I feel like I'm brain farting here because... <laughs> I didn't realize that the siblings all got their powers back. Oh, I, it, yeah, it, I guess yeah. they did. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I, I just assumed, uh, did they did they show that on screen, that they all got their powers back? I thought yeah. so. Yeah, it's before they leave the realm or whatever. Yeah, because well, when, when you were saying mind. earlier in the episode that they didn't get their powers back, I was thinking, well, I thought yeah. they did. Uh, yeah. maybe, I'm, yeah. uh, maybe I'm misremembering. But yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, they did get their powers back. Well, then my apologies. <laughs> I could have sworn. You're horrible at the research. You got to do the research, Kevin. I'm sorry. You're horrible. I gotta, maybe I should rewatch the movie. That's what I should do. <laughs> or maybe I <laughs> won't. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it was nice to have the, the, the callback to Diana Prince showing up, you know, and bringing, you know, oh, we don't have a god that could resurrect him. Yeah, you do. da 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 once the music played, like everybody in the theater was like, "Oh, let's go!" Yeah. Um, I, as much as I was annoyed at the fact that, like, it's a Deus Ex Machina, just out of nowhere, like, "Oh, okay, Wonder <laughs> Woman's gonna come back, undo all the, you know, the the closure that I thought we were getting," and then, however, as annoyed as I was, no matter how many times I hear it, that freaking Wonder yeah, Woman theme good. still slaps. I, I yeah, love. Good. And when it comes in there, I was like, I, I was annoyed, but I was like, yeah, I, got, I can't, I can't be mad at this, th- at this theme. Dude, like what, every time Wonder Woman shows up on screen for any type of Snyderverse film related thing, it's so epic. Yeah. All her fight sequences, even when that music plays and she starts fighting, all I want to do is, is like sit at the edge of my seat going, ah, you know? Mm. <laughs> so when she shows up in this just to save the gods, I'm like, Okay, all right. Listen, like I'm, I'm mad that he's coming back again. Like you're gonna revive him, but like if you're gonna do it, at least do it in a badass way. So that's carry on, Wonder Woman. But she, she comes in, she does the thing, and then she leaves. It's yeah, just she like... literally walks in, walks out. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, like... but but remember that she's in. <laughs> just walks out with the music <laughs> well but also yeah they do they do have an interaction shazam's like hey, hey if you want to call me nah you're out of your league buddy yeah. get out of here yeah, yeah, but by then i was just like okay this is cutesy but okay but she she she's just here for one thing only and then she leaves i don't know mm-hmm. yeah yeah Gen- was- and also the the just to give you the kicker that wasn't Gal Gadot who played Wonder Woman in that scene. Huh? What yeah, that's right. Can you can you believe that? Uh? That was actually a stunt choreographer uh, that played a stunt double of Gal Gadot, and they CGI'd her face in. What? Get out of here! For I'm real? not. I'm not even joking. That was a stunt double who played Gal Gadot for that wow. movie sequence. Oh my gosh! Well, because you, w- you wouldn't have known it. You wouldn't have known. A- 
She did yeah. great. It was it was incredible. I'm maybe maybe Gal Gadot did the voiceover afterwards, but she just wasn't available to do that sequence at the end. It was um, definitely her voice. It was a hundred percent her voice. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if if you look behind the scenes, uh, huh. she was not involved in the movie. She just. Well, I guess they it makes sense. They, wow. they pulled an earlier stunt. They pulled an earlier trick earlier in the movie, except instead of. Instead of Gal Gadot's face, it was Jaimon Hansu's face. So I'm just, if that's the case, I'm assuming it's the same stunt woman who was in that scene as well, huh? Yeah. Those deep well, things are getting good. So these, yeah, these <laughs> yeah, deep things are getting That's crazy. It's like getting scary how good they are. Well, that's but, nuts. I did not uh, even know. I didn't, if things. you hadn't told me, I, I was thinking she showed up, looked great. You yeah. know, always good to see Gal Gadot. Yeah. Oh. I wouldn't be surprised if, the, if they use the same stunt double for uh, the dream the dream sequence with the wizard. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably... They didn't need her face. Yeah. yeah. So it's – it's the other thing is, like, I you know, I'm thinking about all the Snyderverse drama and whatever. Like, Gal Gadot was announcing that they were going to work on Wonder Woman 3, and then Sean – James Gunn was just like, mm, nah. no, that's not happening. Yeah. So, like, maybe she refused to be in these sequences, but maybe this movie was filmed before the whole James Gunn decision stuff. So right. maybe she just didn't have time to be a part of the movie. I don't know. Like, it's yeah. it's interesting. This, this, the Henry Cavill cameo at the end of Black Adam and, and, and this. It's like, yeah, I think all this stuff was done before the James Gunn takeover. But at the same time, it's still like, okay, well, are you, you're still going to leave it in? Because it's like... Ugh. I know this, and then the the end credit scenes, which we'll talk about in a second, are are one of the main problems that I had. Where it's just like, what are we doing? What's why do we st why are we still having these connections and these ties if we're just gonna reboot? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, it it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth by the end because it it's, does. You you want to enjoy the movie for what it is, but then at the end of the day, it's just like, oh, but it's supposed to be connected to it something. It takes you out of the movie. It took me out of the movie. And to me, it feels just as bad as the Justice League Snyderverse cut, where you watch this four-hour film, and it ends in a way that makes you think there could be another Justice League movie with Darkseid as the main villain. Right. And, yeah. and, guess, and we're never going to see that movie. Like, no. we're never going to see it, and that's just such a sad, sad, bitter taste um, is the exact same thing with this. Also, uh, last thing about this sequence was the whole uh, – the wizard taking up residence on Earth, and now he's got, like, a suit and, and a hat and all this you gotta make nice over. stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was like, that's cool, but again, it, it, up. it brings me back to the idea of, like, why do I care about this stuff right now? Like, is any of this – does any of this stuff matter in this movie? Like, if this is a connected universe, does – is he going to be the wizard in the future? Like, how is this going to work? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Did Did anybody care about the big reveal that his name is Shazam? Like, did that... They made such a big fuss out of that. He's like, well, what's it, what's our, what's my name? And he goes, Shazam. And I'm like, well, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's what... That's, that's the movie. That's what we've been calling him. I don't yeah. know. That's the I movie. Mean, I don't know. I, I think they were... It sounded like they were trying to go for, like, more of the humorous kind of thing. But, like, at the same time, to, the first thought that came through my head was, like, oh, well, now you can't say your name to people because... You can never say your name because you'll... Yeah. <laughs> you saved us. That's true. Who That's are true. you? My my name is Shazam. Boom. I'm a child. You know, like, <laughs> that doesn't really work that way. Unless... Yeah. Maybe once he becomes the age that Zachary Levi is, then he could start saying Shazam. And it, every time he says Shazam, it would just automatically transform his suit back and forth by accident. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. That just seems seems like much. A little yeah. much. Yeah, because, yeah, it just didn't, uh, it didn't have an impact on me as much as the movie seemed like it wanted to make an impact. It's, it seemed like the movie was making it seem like this huge reveal. And it's like... Well, yeah, that's what he says every time he transforms. Like, it, <laughs> I don't know. Of course, his name is Shazam. I, I don't know. Well, then let's let's talk about these uh, mid credits and post credit scenes. Um, in a mid credit scene, Amelia Harcourt and John Economos attempt to recruit Billy into the Justice Society on behalf of Amanda Waller. In a post credit scene, a still incarcerated Savannah encounters Mister Mind once again, infuriated with him that he hasn't begun enacting their plan yet. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, let's start with this mid-credit thing. Uh, Justice Society. You, we we already discussed this J Dwayne the Rock Johnson drama. Um, when meeting, I went in, when I saw this, this movie. Uh, oh, good. Oh no, 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 you go ahead. You go ahead. They have this. They're meeting at this like abandoned uh, gas station in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What the hell is this scene? <laughs> yeah, 
it felt like they kind of filmed this months after filming was wrapped and they were like oh we gotta throw this in there because yeah you never know I mean, we gotta continue the universe or something <laughs> maybe it was james gunn saying hey since i'm the guy like i do want to keep this character going because i'm good friends with zachary levi and so is peter safran the other producer of dc um so of course we got to keep our best friend going but is that a good choice i don't really know you know exactly. It's just, who are we keeping around and who are we not keeping around? That's what I, and I thought we got our answers when James Gunn made his announcement of the new slate. But as time has gone on and the more things we learn and the more James Gunn keeps opening his mouth on Twitter, it just makes, everything just gets murkier and murkier. And now all this stuff coming out, you know, and now Amanda Harcourt or Amanda Waller, Amelia Harcourt, John Economo. I mean, these are, these are characters from Peacemaker, so they're carrying over now, it seems like. And then, so now I guess we're bringing Shazam in. Okay, I guess Shazam's part of the new... Oh, and I guess the Justice Society is going to be part of the new continuity. It's just... I'm giving... It gives me a headache trying to mm-hmm. put all this together in my mind. You thought it was bad with Marvel, you know? It was like, it's just... It's just so messy in this transitionary... Yeah. Like, once James Gunn's Superman comes out... I think that will be the true reset because he's yes. still dealing with like the leftovers. Yeah. Well, what this movie is kind of and yeah. what the flash is. Although apparently he said that the flash is going to, is like fantastic. Yeah. That's what a lot of people have said. A lot of insiders have said that this is a really good movie. Supposedly. I'm just, I'm just at this point, I'm just like, I just can't wait. To, can we just get to the new, yeah. I can't wait to get to the new stuff. Like all Dude. this stuff in the meantime, I'm just like, all right, fine. Let's, Let's just get to the new stuff. Then I'll feel better about all this. Exactly. I'm dying for Aquaman 2 to be over already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that one doesn't yes. come out until, I think, July, maybe, or, or November, uh, something like that. Yeah. So, and I'm already like, dude, just get it over with. Like, just, that's, what, that's how I feel. Let's on. get this over with, please. Yeah. yeah and, and, but, and I will admit, James Gunn, he, he did kind of make it a little confusing on what projects that he's coming up with are going to be first and what really starts it. He he did say Superman starts his new universe or whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, he he when he first did his presentation, he showed like 10 other projects before Superman. So I'm like, wait, so these do these come out before Superman and then these just are Elseworld stuff or is it that Superman starts first and then all the other ones that you were presenting in the beginning come out afterwards? I don't know. I'm not a doctor, I, but I, I always have more questions than answers. Anytime, anytime James Gunn says anything on Twitter, responding to a, a, a fan question or something, I'm just the guy needs to stay off of Twitter. I'm sorry. He just yeah. he's he's on Twitter way too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now uh, let me let me go back to this Justice Society though, because I will admit, you know, in Black Adam, I really liked the Justice Society. Like I I thought the team members from that fight that group were really cool. Um, if we get to see Hawkman again, like that's gonna be awesome. Like I, I can't wait to see him again. Um, if we get Love to, to see Doctor Fate, but you know, oh Doctor Fate. Right. Yeah. Well, there's gonna be a new Doctor Fate, right? There's, there's got to be a new one eventually because oh, right. the mask will choose someone else now. Mm. Um, but we'll have to see how that works. But also, there's the other thing. You know, we we've got this mid credit scene with with the Justice Society people. In my mind, I'm like, okay, we're not we're not gonna see another Shazam movie then for a long time. Because, dude, this movie flopped. Like, this movie did really, really poorly in the box office. There's the director no says he, he's not coming back. He's, he's done. Like, I'm done. So the fact that we're never going to get a Shazam 3, it, it's, it's interesting. It's but really will interesting. we still see Shazam? That's the question. Well, if, it sh- if he does show up in the society, just a society in the future, I'm going to assume that Mr. Mind, that giant, that magic caterpillar that shows up in the post credit sequence, might be the main villain for the Justice Society of America in the future, maybe. Mm-hmm. Because right. you can't give us a post credit scene of this caterpillar that's shown up in both movies already and yeah. then just not do anything with him in a third movie with Shazam in it. Yeah. You know? So I, I don't know if they had a plan to do a Shazam 3, but uh, my assumption would have been yes. Um, but it was kind of like this thing where once the, the caterpillar showed up again, I was like, oh, okay, well, now we got to wait again. Like, what? What's yeah. the point of making that, us wait, you know? That's the th- and I honestly thought 
during this movie, I thought we were done. I thought uh, they just scrapped it because there was that post credit scene. Yeah, and the at the end of the first movie, we kind of teased like, oh, this would be the second movie's Mister Mind and 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 all that stuff. Mm. But then this movie comes out. And it's like, okay, clearly they've scrapped that idea. No, but no, no, at the end credit no, I'm, scene of I'm this still movie, working it's like, on it. no, it's still coming. Mr. <laughs> Mind is still coming. I'm like, well, at this point, like, I don't care. I don't, I don't care, I don't care about Mr. Mind. I have and no then, idea who Mr. Mind is. Like, I'm not familiar enough with the comics. So I, I don't, you know, I don't either. I just have a, yeah. a very, a very, uh, superficial knowledge of, of who the character is, but like, I, I don't know. At this point, I just don't care. And then, of course, they they played into the fact that it took him forever because now we're seeing him again at, at the end of this this post credit scene, and they just made it a joke. Now, you know, like, yeah. oh, it, you know, it, I've been waiting here for years and years, and like, well, I'm a I'm a caterpillar. <laughs> I can only I get around slow. so fast. Yeah. yeah. It took me and then it, just to get out of the, yeah. get on the street over here. Yeah. <laughs> And then they end it with him going, okay, I'll be back. And then he leaves again. <laughs> like, I, I get the whole idea that Shazam is supposed to have more humor in it because it, it is a very family-friendly movie. This movie, I think, it w- is perfect for families. Like, sure. families should go watch this movie. It's it's fun. It's a fun time to watch with your, fra- with your friends and family. Um, but it's just, I don't know, there, there's some moments where, like, you want it to be a little more serious. And, you know, you don't need to lighten the mood every scene. Um, and when this worm shows up and makes starts making jokes, I'm like, oh, I thought he was gonna be more of a of a dramatic character or, or more villain, villainous. you know. Although I guess you can't really be too dramatic when the villain is literally a talking caterpillar. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you can only do so much. Yeah, but gentlemen, overall, if I had to give you guys a rating between maybe like ten Captain Sparkles, how many Captain Sparkles <laughs> out of ten would you all give this movie? I'm going to give it five Captain Sparkles out of ten. Five Captain Sparkles out of ten. Raul? Yeah, like four or five. I'll say four because Ted said five, so I'll, yeah. just be, I'll be different. Yeah, four. I'll give it four. Maybe I'm being too uh, too humble or, or modest, but I, I was going to give it a six out of ten. Mm. Six <gasps> Captain Sparkles out right. of ten. Four, five, six. Yeah, Yeah, like like it, it wasn't... It's in the mid-range there. Like the, the story was coherent and fun. But, like, it's not the highest quality of superhero genre I've seen in a long time, you know? Yeah. It's, it it, it felt like a movie from the early 2000s. Mm. Too, like, the superhero movies that we used to get, you know? It was yeah. not pushing the envelope in any, any sort of direction. It was more of the same. And a lot in of the the, humor beats were a lot of very stuff we've seen a million times. Very mm. much in the same uh, same vein as, like, the Black Adam stuff, where, like, it, it feels like a 2000s movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, you know, in another lifetime, maybe this would have been a really cool movie to go watch and everybody would have been overjoyed about it. But I don't know. It just, it feels like they missed, they, they shot into the target and they did not get a bullseye on it. Um, but Hey, I still love the first movie a ton. The -hmm. first movie I think was much better than this one. I did enjoy this one, but the first one, whoo, I will watch that anytime. It's a fun time. Well then gentlemen, with that. We have made it to the end. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can follow us on Instagram at Real Geek News. You can also follow our separate handles on Twitter and Insta at Kevin A. Rivera VO and Raul Ceballos VO. Ted, where can we fellow geeks find you? At Ted Evans VO. Ted Evans VO, you heard it here, folks. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and that's it because I deleted my Twitter. Nice. <laughs> good choice. <laughs> Very good choice. Uh, yeah, and listen, we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, if, if you guys were curious, we put all our episodes. We even put this uh, the movie reviews in there. And uh, so hit that subscribe button and just search Real Geek News. Remember, R-E-E-L Geek News. Um, yeah, hit the little bell, smash the like button. You know what everybody says. Yeah, I don't have to tell you. You know, Leave us a good review. Go to Apple Podcasts. Give us a really good review. That's still the way you get noticed, uh, really, uh, on, you know, as far as podcasts go, is Apple Podcasts. Leave a good review, and we'd love to have your support. Finally, want to share your passionate thoughts and opinions about movies? Any movie reviews you'd like us to do? Well, then, send us an email at realgeeknews at gmail.com. That's real, R-E-E-L. Can you see what I did there? You see what I did there? It's really nice. We'll leave all the descriptions below. With that all being said, stay safe. Stay classy, and most important of all, Raul, stay geeky, my-